Hello. So let's start doing some simple activities to go over these concepts. The first one is on filtering and spectral analysis at a conceptual level. So we are asked here to sketch a one second segment of the signal x of t cosine of 2 pi 3t plus 0 0.1 cosine of 2 pi 60t and then we have to do some filtering and spectral analysis. Now, in this case, it's very easy because the signal is already sinusoidal. So if we were to start with a sketch, time, we can see that there is a sinusoid of 3 Hz with an amplitude of 1 and a phase of 0. And then there is another one of 60 Hz with an amplitude that is much smaller. And so <clears throat> this is going to look something like this. If, if I were to draw the first one here, one cycle, two cycles, three cycles. If this is one second, let me actually do this. This is one second. We see that we have one, two, three cycles in one second. That will be only this part here, right? But there is another component that is much smaller at 60 Hertz. So that means in one second, we should have 60, 60, 60 cycles. And if this is an amplitude of one, it will be basically one tenth of that. So it will be really one, two, even smaller than that. So I'm just going to do here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it will have, if we are just conceptually sketching it, we can do then maybe a MATLAB sketch to look at that. But this is how this signal looks. You see a low frequency component of three Hertz and a high frequency component, maybe due to 60 Hertz line, line noise like that. So that's the sketch part of it. A um, rough sketch. Then we are asked, well, assume that this signal is passed through a low pass filter, T1, characterized with a cutoff frequency of 10 Hz, and um, sketch the output. So what we what we have here is okay, we have this X of T, our signal, which is continuous time, and it goes through some system. Remember a signal, an abstraction of any measurable quantity, anything that changes with time or a space or any independent variable, a system, anything that acts on the signal. So I'm going to oops, denote this as T1. And we have a Y of T or, or, or one, Y1. And this is a low-pass filter, meaning it's a filter that allows low frequencies to go through, but it cuts through, but it cuts, cuts off the high frequencies. And so if we have a low-pass filter, something with a frequency response, let me use a different color for this, like this, and this is an ideal one, now frequencies go through and then they are cut. This is frequency and this is 10 Hertz. What we are going to do in this frequency is cut this component. Right? This is what is cut in the first system. And so my output in this case is only this component. And so if the 60 Hertz was noise, like line noise, you could think, okay, you just filter the signal, one, two, three, one Hertz, T, Y1 of T, in order to clean this, like any other physical filter, in this case, we have an electrical filter that filters something that is unwanted of the signal, 
In this case, what was unwanted was the high frequency components because the noise was there. Okay. We have another system here where we have x of t. And uh, now we ask, it goes through another continuous time system. Remember, a system, signals and systems can be classified as continuous time, discrete time, and digital. If the input signal, the output signal, are continuous time, the system, of course, is continuous time. To produce a system, an abstraction of anything that acts on a signal <clears throat> in order to transform it. And in this case, the system is a high pass filter, meaning cuts low frequencies and allows high frequencies to go through, also of 10 hertz. Okay. And so our output. It will cut the low frequency component. And so we will get something like this, just the 60 hertz. Just think of this as having 60 cycles in one second. With an amplitude, in this case the amplitude is 1, the amplitude here is 0 0.1, y2 of t. Now, we are also asked, sketch the output if this is passed through a spectrum analyzer. So if we have a spectrum analyzer, I'm going to denote the spectrum analyzer also as a system, it can be a block here. Call it FFT, maybe just to denote fast Fourier transform. But <clears throat> magnitude, I'm going to look at only the magnitude. I'm not going to pay too much attention as to, as to the amplitude, just the frequency content. So I'm going to assume that this is like a system that has multi multiple channels, meaning I can put XT, X, the input signal, the output from the previous system of the low pass and the high pass. And what will be the a spectrum here that I get. Let's plot in the magnitude. We're going to do a plot. So in the first component, the first one, we will see something like this. The spectrum analysis. The spectrum analyzer gives us the frequency content of the signal. So, so it will be as a function of frequency, we see, so this is one hertz, two hertz, three hertz. At three hertz, we have a component. For now, I'm just going to assume that the amplitude that we see is exactly the amplitude. It has, this has been adjusted. So it is the amplitude that you see in the signal. So this is one, and then four hertz, five hertz, keeps going up much, this is a disconnect in the time scale. Much later, we see a 0 0.1 amplitude at 60 hertz. So this is the spectrum, magnitude spectrum of your X of T signal, meaning you just look at the frequency content, you see, okay, at 3 hertz, we have a spectral line. At 60 hertz, we have another one. Now, of course, if we plot y1, we will only see this. At 1, at 3 hertz. This is the spectrum for, because that's the only component that we have in this signal here. And in the other case, there is nothing now at 3 hertz because it was filtered by the high pass filter, and we just have here something at 60 hertz of an amplitude of 0 0.1. Now, later in the course, you're going to see videos where we can look at any signal and be able to do a spectral analysis, not a simple signal like this, but the fundamental concept is the same. You have a signal, 
you are decomposing it into a sum of sinusoids. With, you can look at a spectrum analy- with a spectrum analyzer, or in our case, the ideal spectrum analyzer for continuous time signal is going to be the continuous time Fourier transform. That's our spectrum analyzer. Or for discrete time signals, the discrete time Fourier transform. Or for digital signals, the digital Fourier transform, which we will implement in DSP processors, practically as the fast Fourier transform. Effectively, what does it do is you put something in, and you, without having to do any Fourier analysis, the spectrum analyzer through the fast Fourier transform algorithm, it gives you something that looks like this. It gives you the spectra. Yeah, that can be a, a signal that's very complex that does not look like a sinusoid. It can be your speech, for instance. You're going to see the spectral analysis of your speech. Or a physiological signal, like the electrocardiogram, um, or intracranial pressure, whatever. You don't need to do it mathematically because the fast Fourier transform does it for you. But you need to understand the fundamental, how the fast Fourier transform works. And to do that, it is helpful to start with a simple example like this, where you could just see that the component is 3 hertz, 60 hertz. Therefore, yes, you have a spectral line at 3 hertz, at 60 hertz. If you take it through a filter, that is a low-pass filter, only allows the low frequencies through, you will clean, meaning remove this high-frequency noise, if it is that indeed the noise, and so you will only see that the spectral line in the spectrum, or if you pass it through a high-pass filter, the low frequencies get cut, the high frequencies go through, so you only get the high frequency through and the spectral line. And this is very basic, very fundamental, very easy mathematically. You can do the analysis yourself just visually. But it illustrates a lot of what we are going to be doing with more complex signals and then how to create these systems that right now they are just conceptually defined, especially as digital systems, and especially as finite input response filters and infinite response filters, although we will also then do some practical applications perhaps of adaptive filters too. One more point. In this case, the signal content, frequency content, did not change with time. Okay, This was a time invariant signal. And so we could just do this, a plot with frequency. But if it changes with time, as we're going to see, we would like to do time frequency analysis with the spectrograms. And that's something also that we will see examples of in this course in later videos. Thank you.